Hi everyone, it's Andrew and we are here to do a quick, hopefully, catch up on two rigs that I've been working on. Which one should we do first? Eeny meeny miny mo catch up B16 by the broken prop shaft. We'll do the Jeep first. All right. Okay, so the little Arizona. Uh, the chassis is stock, except for the shock absorbers. So everything else is stock. All of this under here, stock. The electrics, stock. I haven't changed anything. I've tried, <laughs> but I haven't changed anything. Um, no problem, no concern with how it runs at all. I was quite pleased that it runs with some control and smoothness. Now we covered a lot of this on the last video. So I'll give you a quick recap in case you haven't seen that. But uh, it's been painted with a, with a kind of petrol blue colour, which I had left over from a previous project. Um, it has had, and it's got a black, a black roof and a black bonnet, which I'll come to in a minute, but it's got a black roof. Uh, and I've kind of painted in this back section black as well. I think this is the removable bit, so I wanted it to be a different colour, um, as, as I believe many of them are. It's got a black bonnet, primarily because... <clears throat> the shell fell off the kitchen worktop and landed on this corner of the bonnet and pushed the bonnet inside the body um, Inside the wing and scraped all the paint off so I had to cut it all back and I'd run out of blue So that was it. I had, it had to be black because that was all, all I had left And I think it looks okay. It's kind of you know black roof black bonnet, you know reflections of the Sun and a kind of you know I can I can kind of justify that a little bit in my own head if nowhere else um, So that's all great um, it has had a full interior, which I, I did show you last time, so I'm not going to go through it all again, but it has got an RC four-wheel drive D90 Galandi interior, a Land Rover interior in there. Um, and you'll recall or be aware that the FMS Fire Horse or Lighthouse or something, it's something crazy, uh, the, the red uh, version of this is the same company, okay? This is the, this is the kind of uh, budget version, and then the, the FMS uh, version is the uh, more deluxe version. Comes with an interior and clear windows. So if you, if you want that, but don't want to do it yourself, go for it. It's worth buying the, the FMS version, I will be honest. Um, but I chose to go the hard way and put a, 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 an 18 scale Galandi interior in. I've cut the windows out front, uh, the front windows out. I was going to reglaze the windscreen clear, but in the end I couldn't be bothered. So it's just got a, the side windows cut out to let some light in. Uh, and I think a tinted, uh, you know, tinted windows are okay. It's got a bit of detail in the back, just so you can see something in there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. You know, I've done a little bit of, a little tiny little windscreen uh, wash pattern on there. You know, but the kit's great. It comes with mirrors, it comes with windscreen wipers, uh, beautiful door handles. You know, the, the shell, the, the detail on the shell is, is really, really good. I'm really impressed uh, with it. Now, moving down the truck, I will. Obviously, it's got new wheels and tyres on. I have had some issue with, with tyres, especially the front. The front. The, these 18 scale trucks, I'll tell you now, and I've seen this on other videos. I'll put a, I was watching, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll put a link to his video where he's trying the blue um, Chevy uh, Iceberg or something, whatever it's called, the, the blue Chevy pickup from EZRC, which is the same as the red and white one from FMS. Um, he's tried to do wheels and tires and things like that to that and had absolutely no, he's tried to put new links on it, had no look at all, um, which is a shame because the links on this are, are awful. Uh, they do the job, but they are awful. There's an awful lot of, uh, you know, side to side going on. They're just not, they're more like WPL stuff. But the problem I had with this, um, the wheels and tyres, I have got, well, let, let, I'll just tell you what the problem is, instead of waffling on. The problem is, the axles aren't very wide. So you have problems fitting the wheels. So you've got all the steering gubbins going on in there, and even these rub, um, rub the, the, the hubs and things. The treels, were so narrow that they brought the whole thing in too far and they just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and again if I try to pack them out with spaces I couldn't get the nuts on so they, they were unfortunately a beautiful waste of money um, and I ended up getting some in Inora, Injora uh, wheels and tyres so I'm happy with these wheels and tyres they, they are a bit hard there's no foams in these tyres and yet I'm not getting any I'm not getting any squish a little bit hard uh, they may soften over time. The truck's quite light as well, and I would like to add more weight. So I'm going to be looking at maybe putting some weight on the chassis um, just to try and settle it down. Now, on top of settling it down, what I've got on here are some Panda Hobby 
24th scale shocks. Now they've just done, you can see it there, silver one. They've just released a portal axled 24th scale G-Wagon. And I figured that they, those shocks might indeed be the right size for these. The Panda Hobby 18th ones, let me tell you, off the Bronco are too fat. They don't fit the, the, the gap, the space you've got. Um, and they're quite long as well compared to this, the, the, the Bronco is. The Broncos are 10 millimeters longer uh, in the shock department. They are oil filled, but because of their size, they're nowhere near as good as the bigger ones on the Bronco, but they aren't bad. I get one bounce. Okay, one bounce, and then it stops. Um, I've still got quite a lot of body wobble, which I like, but the truck itself is not, it's not too shabby at all. There's not a huge amount of travel on them. There's a fair bit, but not a huge amount. Again, scale, I think that's perfectly scaling. You, know, you, you want to take your Jeep up much higher than that? Probably not. So that's pretty much the Jeep, okay? That's pretty much it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm keen to run it. I'm keen to see if the wheels un, unwind themselves and fall off. And uh, yeah, but I'm quite pleased with the paint job. I've done a little bit of weathering, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit to see the, the panel lines. And just, you know, it's not factory fresh, but it's not battered and bruised either. So that's that, okay? Next up, we have this beast. So you will undoubtedly, or well, our loyal fans, my loyal fans will probably remember at some point last year, might even been the year before, I really can't remember, uh, started turning Terry's old B16, which is a kind of like a, a juice and a half army truck. Uh, our first WPLs, it was an RTR. No, it wasn't. It was a kit. I tell you, it was a kit version, but not the metal version. It was the, the plastic kit version and he kind of got sick of it and butchered it a bit and kind of threw it out well which is the same as throwing it to me really so I took it on because I wanted to make a fuel tanker a WPL had released the fuel tanker option the, the, the big tank on the back here um, so that kind of made my plans kind of okay that's what's going to happen to it I do have an old plastic kit 35th scale armor kit of a virtually the same I think it's a I can't remember what it is now I should have had a look shouldn't I so I want to say an M2459, but whatever the designation is, it's effectively the, the, the deuce and a half um, from the sort of 60s, 70s with a fuel tanker on the back. And I've modelled this, I've made this on the, on, on, uh, to the box art. And it's not too shabby. It's had some scratch building done. Uh, all these sides are all made. I made all this kind of frame. The, the tank sits in a frame on the real truck, so... That's what I wanted it to do here. These um, flaps and arches that you see here, these are from Amazon. All the accessories you see on there, the ladders and stuff, uh, some of them came from WPL, some of them I've made. Um, that uh, hose is an old airbrush hose uh, that I've made the fueling kind of nozzles for and stuff like that, stuck it on. And I cut the roof off the cab to put a uh, a fake kind of canvas uh, roof on there. It's also had the metal wheel upgrades with the the dualies on the back. So these fancy army issue tires are only available on the on this kit on this this upgrade you can buy off Banggood and stuff. It's not a licensed WPL one. And um, these are the same rims at the front here. These are the same rims I've got on my C44. Those of you with an eagle eye. And. It looks pretty hench. I was well impressed with how it worked out. I've, you know, weathered the chassis and painted the chassis and everything. And I have spent uh, most of my day on Saturday was spent sorting out not the servo and not the electronics. That was relatively straightforward. But was sorting out the servo clearances, the steering angles and things and clearances. They just once you've worked on this kind of thing, and you know this kind of new newer newer kind of breed of mini trucks. Everything, although fairly naff quality, is actually fairly small and therefore doesn't get in its own way. The WPL stuff, especially if you, you know, you go for the third party upgrade sets from Banggood, that kind of AliExpress kind of thing. All the parts are like super sized. They're all like 10 scale parts almost. This, all these, these panel bars and things are just huge. So they get in each other's way. Um, I had so much trouble trying to get this thing to turn. The servo kept crapping out because it was getting jammed. And, and, you know, I spent just an awful long time trying to mount this stuff so that it didn't get in each other's way. And eventually I got it done, 
got out in the uh, late afternoon sun with it and the prop shaft fell off. So, epic fail. And I didn't have any tools with me because I was in a rush. So, it is done and I am looking forward to getting it out there. Um, it will drive like, like, like ass basically and it, it you know i know it's not going to work i know it's going to be bobbly and bouncy and it's going to have to be shot at 120 fps to try and slow it down enough to so it doesn't look uh like a bouncy toy but it just looks awesome i'm really proud of how it looks you'd never guess it was a wpl truck i hope uh that that was really my uh, main aim with it editing it and and trying to produce uh, a video that this actually looks some way convincing like the real thing it does actually have a bit of a bit of body wobble which i'm quite pleased with on the wpl springs you know there is a little bit of of you know <laughs> a little bit of travel um on it it does have a little bit of a little bit of flex at the front you know there's a little bit of a little bit of something in there i've had to modify the front suspension as well mess about with different leaf packs and things to try and get some sort of uh, travel on it so yeah I'm, I'm hoping that slowed down it will actually look relatively convincing but that's it that's it those are the two trucks that I've been working on so on that uh, gripping um, disappointment I will leave you and I will go about uh, my evening I've got a flat house inspection uh, from the uh, agents so they're going to come and um, tell me I'm not keeping it clean and wonder why I've got so many kids toys <clears throat> Such as such as the hobby such as the hobby Fortunately, I do have my kids toys and my kids beds, you know, so th th there is a vague possibility They might believe they're not mine, you know, and I count myself lucky for that. So yes, thank you for uh, for tuning in Thank you for watching this all the way through. I don't know how long it's gonna be too long probably is the answer um Easy RC Arizona, WPL B16 um, shit pile, and the Range Rover is going to be next up. I really do have to do some work on that uh, so that I've got something to show you next weekend. Next week. Um, ooh, not enough hours in the day either. Stupid work. Anyway, thank you. Good night. Good evening. Have a nice time, day, week. You know. Who am I kidding? Nobody's going to watch this anyway. Talk to myself, really. How are you, Andrew? I'm fine. You're not getting any prettier. No, I know I'm not. Oh, yeah, and I did my hair. Yeah. yeah. Wicked. <laughs> but I can make myself laugh, so that's a good thing, isn't it? All right. Don't go and play drums and annoy the neighbours. I might do. Hmm. On that musical interlude, uh, I won't. I won't put footage of that in. Christ. You scant few viewers. Uh, I don't want to put you off. All right. Thank you. Good night. Bye. See you soon.